BBC Television presents... Hancock. 268. 269. So what are you counting, Sid? The number of carry-on films you'll have made by next year? <laughs> yeah, very funny. Don't you know it's February the 14th tomorrow? Now let me see. Yes, February the 14th, the day after February the 13th, of course. <laughs> and it's St Valentine's Day. Ha <laughs> ha, you don't still believe in all that adolescent rubbish, do you, Sid? Gracious me, at your age, who's going to send an old chap like you a Valentine's card? <laughs> 269 ladies, that's who. <laughs> You've got 269 valentines? Well, there must be some very desperate women out there, that's all I can say. <laughs> they're not desperate, they're good looking. I'm only counting the good looking ones. The other part is the ugly ones. <laughs> oh, that part over there. I'll go through this one then, if you don't mind, Sid. What, the ugly one? No, the good looking ones, of course. For God's sake, if they fancy you, Sid, they'll be all over me. <laughs> No, you're not having any in that pile. They're mine. How many women do you need, for God's sake? 269, plus the ones that come tomorrow. So, with a bit of luck, that will be one for every day of the year. How do you do it, Sid? There's gargoyles on East Gym Church that should be getting more valentines than you are. Talking about gargoyles, why don't you get a lot of cards then? Because the sort of ladies that like me, Sid, don't send valentine cards. They're too sophisticated. They're a lot classier. Thanks very much. Anyway, look at some of my cards. They've got the ladies' photos in them. Are they sophisticated enough for you? They look pretty classy to me. She's quite nice, that's uh, not bad. Why on earth is she sending you a card? This is ridiculous. <laughs> so how many valentines did you get, Adcock? Um, Sorry, what did you say? I didn't get any, all right. <laughs> you must be gutted. Of course not. Valentines is an ephemeral, <laughs> an ephemeral fantasy. Only those too young to engage in or understand the notions of true love. Those of us with a more mature outlook don't expect or value such petty trifles, Sid. We're searching for something a bit deeper and more genuine. <laughs> you wanted one a few minutes ago. I just thought I would take some off your hands, that's all. Do your favour. We don't want them cluttering up the place, do we? Anyway, you probably wrote them yourself. Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm Sid James and so are you. <laughs> Look in the mirror, kiss me quick, I'm Sid James and he's a twit. <laughs> so very much, you're jealous. Jealous? Jealous? Don't be preposterous, Sid. A good-looking man like me. Just look at yourself. More wrinkles than Nori... B -b -b than Nora Batty stockings. Less hair than a bald leg... Egg and nearly twice my age. <laughs> That's not what the ladies see, Hancock. They must all be wearing dark glasses, that's all I can say. There's no justice in this world, is there? The arrow of true love does not run straight, does it? It flies like a boomerang and shoots you up the backside. <laughs> Good evening. You said you wanted to see me. You know it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. I always get excited. More in expectation than anything else. But it's better to travel, hopefully, than to arrive. That's what my dad always said, bloody fool. Uh, as a matter of fact, Ken, that's why I rang you. Oh, good, because I've already sent you a card. Have you got it yet? You can give me mine now. Just chums. Nothing more than that, of course. <laughs> Proper blokes don't send one another Valentine's card, Ken. It's not about me anyway, it's about Tony Hancock. I never said I was a proper bloke, did I? Oh no, I haven't sent him one. It's not my type. It would be like sending my grandma one. Well, Hancock hasn't received any Valentine's and he's taken it very hard. Oh, it's not my fault, is it? It's him. He's got no charm, no je ne sais quoi, no mystique. He hasn't got animal magnetism like me. <laughs> well, Ken, can you think of anyone who we could persuade to send Anchor a Valentine's card? Well, let me think. 
No. Oh, wait a minute, what about the vicar? Better not, he won't take it too seriously. I'll ask me mum, she'll see anyone. I was thinking of someone a bit younger. What's wrong with me mum? She's half your age. I wish people would stop saying that. OK, don't panic, I'll think of someone. Well, let's see. I'll look through my address book. <laughs> very chuffed and gock. The little fellow with the bows and arrows has just paid me a visit, Sid. Not that I really care. But you know, one ought to join in these ancient pagan customs when the occasion arises. <laughs> Is that your way of telling me you've just got a Valentine's card, and gock? That's right, Sid. You're not the only one at number 23 railway cuttings who's got a Valentine. Is that it on the table? No, you can't look at it. But it says, to my dearest love, my Valentine and admirer, Harriet. <laughs> Who's it from then? You're getting very nosy, Sid. From Harriet, of course. I just said so, didn't I? You've got to listen, Sid. <laughs> Who's Harriet when she's at home? Well, as she says, my dearest love, uh, an admirer. I've no idea. It's an anonymous admirer. It's an anonymous admirer. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hattie is short for Harriet. Well, oh, stone me. Hattie Jakes has sent me a Valentine's card. No, it can't be our lovely Hattie, can it? I doubt it. She's got too much sense, uh, I mean. But why ever not? She's got good taste, that woman. She's also a good friend. But let's not make more of it than we should. It's probably just a little friendly gesture between good colleagues and long-time associates. Mind you, I thought I saw a little twinkle in her eye last time we met. Perhaps there is a spark. I'll invite her over for an intimate candlelit dinner right away and try to ignite it. <laughs> Are you sure that's wise, Hancock? More ace, less speed. You don't want to go blundering into things and spoil a good friendship, do you? And faint art never won fair lady, Sid. As you well know, strike while the iron's hot. <laughs> Quick, Kenneth, you've got to get over here. Hancock's planning to get all romantic with Atty Jakes. He's making a big mistake. He's just got a Valentine's car through the post. Who did you manage to get to send him one? Oh, hello, Tony. This is all very grand. I thought it was just a working supper. Oh, look, Sid and Kenneth are here too. How nice. What are you two doing here? Who invited you? He, he did. did. You can flaming well go in and uninvite yourselves. Go down the pub. This is for me and Hattie, or should I say Harriet? Two's company, three's a crowd, and four is a pain in the flaming arse. Now off it. Candles, how lovely. Who are they for, Tony? Sid and Kenneth? <laughs> it's Valentine's Day, Etty. I said to myself, let's give the old silver in the cupboard a good polish and invite a bit of female company round. I thought, and that's you. Not the old silver, th the female company, of course. <laughs> Yes, I know it's St Valentine's, Tony, but candles are usually associated, associated you know, with romance. <laughs> romance. No, ha, ha, ha. Well, we have known each other for a long time, haven't we? It's hardly a whirlwind, whirlwind, whirlwind romance, is it, Hat? No, it's not been a whirlwind, Tony. More a blowing off. <laughs> Ha ha ha, yes, you could put it like that. But I thought that now we were ready to move our relationship onto a new level. Are we, Tony? I'm not so sure. What level are we talking about? Well, I'm completely certain. You leave her alone, you dirty dog. I don't think she's ready to climb the stairs to your boudoir anyway. <laughs> and you can stop sticking your oar in, Williams. You can get your own Valentine's sweetheart, can't you? Oh dear, what's happening, Tony? I don't quite understand. Why are you getting all gooey-eyed with me? What makes you think I was your Valentine's sweetheart? And Gilk thinks you sent him a Valentine's card, Eddie. Did you have too much sherry to actually send him one? <laughs> I most certainly did not. I wouldn't dream of it. I, I, I mean, uh, no, it wasn't me. Much as I would have liked to, Tony. It wasn't me. <laughs> now, don't be shy at. You know you've been hiding feelings for me. Don't mind these two. You can speak your mind. We're both adults. Look, the cards are Harriet. To my dearest love, my Valentine, and Amara, Harriet. You're the only Harriet I know, Harriet. 
But my name has never been Harriet. I've always been Hattie. Did you ask Hattie to send a card, Ken? No, I don't know nothing about Hattie. She wasn't one of the people I asked. In fact, she was about the only person I didn't ask. I had to get down on my knees and practically beg some people. <laughs> so how many people did you ask to send Hancock a card? Practically everyone in my dress book, except the milkman. I told them all I needed someone to cheer up a lonely heart. There's about 427. And he's still only got one card. <laughs> Oh no, it's not my fault. I even offered to pay. I sent luncheon vouchers as well. Tickets to see the latest carry on film. Everything. <laughs> Is my bleeding Valentine's Day in? <laughs> you mean Tony Hancock, darling? Yes, he's in. Are you Harriet? Of course I bleeding well am. Hello, Tony. Happy Valentine's Day, darling. How have you been keeping? <laughs> My God, it's Auntie Harriet. What are you doing here? I've come to give my little boy a big Valentine's Day kiss. I've heard you're lonely. Or well, some stupid git told me anyway. Some stupid git told me anyway. Well, thanks, Auntie, but Sid James is the ladies' man. He he's more your type. Take over, Sid. Have a candlelit dinner for two. <laughs>